You're listening to Tacoma.fm, and I'm Everett Erickson, meaning that it's time for another mixed review. Today's movie for review is All the Money in the World, the story of the kidnapping of J.P. Getty III, starring Michelle Williams and Mark Wahlberg with Christopher and Charlie Plummer. After his grandson is kidnapped in Rome, billionaire J. Paul Getty refuses to pay the $17 million ransom. Instead, he hires an ex-CIA operative to track down the culprits, despite constant pressure from the boy's mother to pay up. My child is a prisoner. $17 million. All they will take his eye, his ear, the hand, and don't tell me you don't have the money. We need to pay the ransom, Mr. Getty. I do not have the money to spare. No one has ever been richer than you are at this moment. What would it take for you to feel secure? More. More. I'm gonna find your son. Now it's time for The Good Review. A large portion of the time, movies that are based on a true story won't really bother too much to be faithful to the stories they're based on. However, with the adaptation of John Pearson's book Painfully Rich, the film is able to remain true to the real story while having tons of story reversals and surprising moments. The use of color in camera movement by Ridley Scott in the movie is phenomenal, and although the colors are often muted, one can tell the amount of thought that went into the framing and composition of each and every shot. Christopher Plummer delivers an amazing performance as the character J. Paul Getty and gives depth to the portrayal of a man who cared immensely about his family but was also unable to let go of his greed and hate to actively seek his grandson's kidnapper. Speaking of which, Charlie Plummer, as the grandson, delivers just as strong of a performance and each scene with Romain Duris, who portrays the head kidnapper, demonstrates the two actors' amazing chemistry. But most of all, what makes this film stand out is the phenomenal use of location and setting as well as Ridley Scott's ability to use costume and props to differentiate between the distinct time periods that the story presents. I give All the Money in the World 5 out of 5 stars. And now... The Bad Review. All the money in the world is full of competent people doing poor quality work. Michelle Williams is a terrific actress, but not in this movie. Several times she attempts to cry on screen, but instead only makes an awkward face and noise. If your son had been kidnapped, I would think one would be crying all the time. Mark Wahlberg just flat out doesn't belong in this movie. There are so many other actors that could have done a better job as the CIA agent. His persona belongs in an action blockbuster, not a drama. So many times, I could see a shadow of a camera in a shot, or I could tell that Christopher Plummer was added in in post. Ridley Scott knows how to prevent things like this from happening, but for some reason he just didn't choose to. A simple reshoot or a couple more tries to fix the green screen issues would have solved this problem. By the way, the best part of this movie, Christopher Plummer, was added in because Kevin Spacey turned out to be a pedophile. Just let that sink in for a second. Whatever, the main point is that the entire time during this movie, I was just bored. Something about the whole thing just makes it feel like Christopher Plummer was the only one who put his full effort into it. I give all the money in the world zero stars. And there you have it. You heard a review of All the Money in the World from someone who liked the movie and from someone who didn't. Now, if you want to see it or not, that's up to you. And from Everett Erickson, I hope you have a happy 2018 with many more movies and reviews to come. <laughs>